<clears throat> one, two, one, two. All right, let's roll. Let's Welcome. Roll. Welcome. You're listening to the Saddle Up Podcast. Woo! Where we discuss everything related to UTR GB Athletics. Past or present, we'll catch up with old teammates, friends, and take you down memory lane. With exclusive interviews. This is the Saddle Up Podcast. The voice of your covered walkway screens. So dope. This is going to be awesome. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. From Bronx Village to the Fieldhouse, we'll cover it all. Hell yeah, dude. Carpe Daniel. So saddle up and let's go. Saddle up, partner. Gentlemen, we have the one and only Neville Shed from the Let's Glory down. Road days, Texas Western, joining the show this week. Neville, you were a true friend, a mentor, a blessing, and a godsend. Thank you for joining the show this week. Hey, this is really a, a pleasure. You know, looking forward to seeing you in live one of these times, person to person. But for this, for today, we'll settle for this. <laughs> Let's make it happen. Oh my gosh, Neville, it's been, it seems like it's been ages since you and I have hung out and we'll get into that later because we've got stories, I know, but. Keep but, it clicking, uh, strictly off the record. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I guess I want to, I want to, I want to start by saying one, you know, I've, I've, I've said this to you many a times when we've been, you know, together where I have always been a fan of yours and I'm a true historian of the game and to, to pay respect and homage to what you did 50, what you and your teammates did 57 years ago was amazing. So I just want to give you your flowers now and, and say thank you for changing the game and everything that you did for the game of basketball. So thank you, Neville, for being a part of history. Hey, you know, truly, it's, it's a blessing. Now, you got to remember, we were just a bunch of kids, you know, playing one game after another, thinking about the big opportunity probably to go to the, to the big dance. It wasn't called the big dance back then, but just to get to the playoff. And we played one game after another. It was amazing how people started saying, wait till they play this game, wait till we play that game. And we continue to just beat these teams. And, you know, and we... We beat them with a lot of character. The things that they said we couldn't do were just myths. Because we, I mean, hey, we played for a heck of a coach. And we had unknown players. See, that's the that's the fantastic thing about it. But these guys, not just the seven Afro-Americans, but all 12 of those guys could have went to other schools mm -hmm. and really played a big role in, in the game of basketball. Yeah. Imagine, think about this. How much money do you think you would have made on NIL money now? <laughs> Shut up, boy. I'll tell you what there. Hey, I'd have a wide screen here talking to you guys with. <laughs> I've known you for like 12 years now, 13 years. And... I know your son was a, your son was a little guy then, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Remember uh, when he was getting in trouble at camp? You had to pull him aside and get after him? Yeah. He's yeah, gotta love that. Now, now he, you know, oh, he's he's big time now. You know, hey, you know, like like daddy. <laughs> His daddy was a hell. He was a heck of a character too. Strictly a go getter, and his dreams were unlimited. You know, I'm scared to see that he's right here now. But you know, in the grace of God, he's gonna go even higher. Well, I appreciate that, that Neville. Guarantee. I appreciate that, Neville. So. Obviously, the the you know you pay a lot of people might wonder what Neville Shedd is doing on the podcast, right? And you obviously play for Texas Western, which is now UTEP, and but you were part of that '66 championship against Kentucky, um, which inspired the movie Glory Road. But the reason why you're on, not because you're just a treasure, but you actually played against Pan American College, right? Every year we played against them. Every wow. year, and uh, fortunately, they were not uh, successful in winning any of those games. But uh, by my <laughs> junior year now, they, you know, they were uh, quite competitive in that high school that they played in. And I remember Otto Moore several times. I had my fun with him, but I remember the last game that we played against him, he was a different, he was a different character. I mean, he made us all work. 
You know, and later on, I think he went to the pros and played for a little while, didn't he? For a hot second, yeah. Six uh, eleven, Otto Moore, right? He was a, he yes, was a, he was a young guy out of uh, I believe he was out of Miami, Miami, Florida. Uh, so yeah, but he uh, did I mean, y'all play? Did y'all play against? Uh, well, we call it Pan Am, but did you play against Pan Am? Uh, that year that y'all won the championship? Yes, that was close to our last game of the season. Wow! You know, uh, they tested us. You know, I mean, we I think. I think the game, I, it was a, a home and home. I think we played them at our place first. And the second time we played them, uh, we had to, you know, you know, really get down and dirty with them because Otto just went berserk, you know. <laughs> you know, and I had, and not, you know, bless his soul, not that uh, I'm saying that I, I, I dominated him, but I was a lot quicker than he was. You know, and that made things, you know, somewhat easy, but he started, he gained weight, you know, got strong, and he made it quite uh, a game. But yeah. when you got Big Daddy Latin, you know, 6'6", 240 pounds, and Harry Florida, who was the best rebounder in the nation that year, and the shadow, he had his work, you know, he had his work, you know, he had to work for uh, that defeat. <laughs> well, not too many people know. Let me, let me catch them up on history. Neville goes by the name of the shadow. Because defensively, he was there like a shadow, right? And so we 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 call him the shadow, and, and the the nickname was well-deserved. It was well-deserved. So did you uh, ever I play against I, Lucius Jackson? Huh? Did you ever play against uh, big Lucius Jackson? No, no, no. He was there my freshman year. That was a game between um, Bad News Barnes that was played for us. And Lucius Jackson, of course, for Pan American. And when either one of those guys got the ball, the other get, other eight guys just wanted to stand and look because those were the battle of the Titans. You know, God, you know, Lu Lucius Jackson was, uh, you know, run silent, work deep, you know, around that basket. He was a beast. But we had somebody that can uh, that can play with him. Uh, uh, Jim Barnes, who uh, was drafted uh, number one in the NBA, went to the New York Knicks and also played wow. in the Olympics. Wow. And Lucius ended up playing for Team USA also. Like he, yes, yeah, he did. He, yeah. That's, that's crazy. I, I didn't know that you played against them until I called you a couple of weeks ago to check on you. And, <clears throat> and uh, we, you know, I had mentioned the podcast and you started we started kind of, and you were like, Pan Am, yeah, yeah, that we played against them. So yeah. I, I just uh, I just can't imagine. And y'all didn't play in the field house, right? You you mentioned you Everything, played in high school. The field house was not yet. Uh, it might have been in the dreams of Pan American. We played in that high school. And the crowd was a, it was a retirement neighborhood now, you know. So we, they had a great crowd of the old folks hoping that they weren't going to have a cardiac arrest while the game was going on, you know. <laughs> you know, but uh, the, the game were competitive. They did have, you know, they had good athletes, but Otto Moore is, is the one that I remember, you know, because of, you know, how tenacious he was. He was a quiet dude, too, you know. He didn't yeah. show that, you know, that beastly type of uh, environment, you know, the big guys do today. But he, he no, he, around that basket, he was tough. You know, the name, the shadow really came out. And, you know, we laugh about the name, The Shadow. You know, uh, uh, the sports information director, Eddie Mullins, Eddie Mullins, he gave all the guys names. You know, Latin was Big Daddy Latin. Cajun was Scoops. <laughs> Willie Worsley was uh, Ironhead. Um, Bobby Joe Hill was, you know, BJ. Austin Otters, Austin Otters was a little, little old. And they first had to give me a name. And the first name they gave me was The Tool. No the one said. And I said, nah, you got to do better than that. You know, you can't be calling me the tool here around here. You know, <laughs> go, tool, go. And I, I forgot. It. They, had to, they had to get rid of that. So then, you know, I guess for my hard work in uh, playing defense, they came yep. up with the shadow and saying I stayed so close to my opponents that they thought that I was their shadow. And with the grace of God, it's been with me ever since. Ne wow. Neville, what what nickname would you give Matt? Cool breeze. <laughs> yes, cool man. breeze. You know, that's how he floats, man. You know, 
hey, you know, he, you know, everything he talk, he talks smooth, you know, you know, he's mm-hmm. never, he never, nothing never panics him, you know, and he's always yeah. cool, you know. Oh, um, Max, I, cool breeze, gobble, I, gobble, I, pump. Oh, oh gobble, I'm gobble, good. gobble, that gobble. No. For life, brother, for life. <laughs> for life, for life. So, breeze. I, like I was cool telling, breeze. I was telling G off camera about why you call me gobble, gobble, because he asked me that, right? And so, <laughs> I told him. I told him the story about us that one night we were hanging out and uh, we finished that whole bottle of wild turkey. Uh, and, sure. and I I, had, I don't know how it came about, but I just said, oh, you asked me, you were like, hey, young fella, how you feeling? And I said, gobble, gobble. And <laughs> it stuck with me ever since yeah, then. That's, so. what, that's how it was. And, and I mean, if he had some feathers, man, we'd have him for Thanksgiving. <laughs> boy, it came out big time, gobble, gobble. <laughs> Oh God! Now, yeah. Oh my gosh. Now, Neville, do you have plans on going to the Final Four? I mean, it's the fifty-seventh anniversary of of y'all winning the championship. Like, you have plans we're, on going? We're working. We're working on it. You know, we're working on it. You know, it all depends on. You know, I got so many things I'm doing here. You know, my speaking engagements are starting to happen again. You know, the window is open more. Yeah. Due to the fact that, you know the pandemic. You know, has kind of slowed down yeah, it limited it yeah. yeah so now that I, i'm getting a lot of speaking engagements you know and if i can get a little fit in my time you know i like to go because you know uh if i do uh go i have this real nice um jacket you know okay. that has emblem you know uh 1966 you know champion and i sport it around there you know they oh they, i know you do i've seen it <laughs> i know you do you know, I know you do. No, it's not bragging. It's history. No, no, it's it history. is history. You're you're a part of basketball history, just like anybody. Where, whether it be, uh, you know, a Michael or a Kobe or a Shaq or a you know a Pat Riley or whoever, right? Like or um, Dick Vitale. Like you and your teammates, your team are a part of history, and you should be proud of it. And so. I wouldn't I need- consider it bragging at all. Uh, you know, you know me, man. I'm I'm very humble to it and very blessed. That never thought that I would, you know, be on a team of good unknown players. You understand? And start off with some easy games, and the games got harder and harder. But we played even harder than the games that were, you know, before us. And you know, everybody had what it is we bought into Coach Haskins' style of playing. Mm-hmm. Now, at first, now remember now, uh, three of us are uh, from New York City, you know, Bobby Joe from Detroit, two of them from Indiana, you know, and Latin from uh, Houston. Hey, man, we were Maseratis. And Haskins had us like Maseratis running like on a Volkswagen track. You know, we couldn't. He, I mean, he wouldn't let us go. I remember one time I, I grabbed the rebound and started dribbling and passing out, you know, and, and took off down the floor. And everybody started slowing the ball. I said, man, what you doing? He said, um, we passed the ball at least 15 times, unless it was a layup shot. No bounce passes. No, you can't pa- put the ball behind your back or between your legs. That was a no-no. Strictly the game has changed now, huh? Coach Haskins oh, would have thrown a fit. Hey, right. but he changed a lot now. You know, oh, he you did. Like um, Nate Archibald and Timmy Hardaway, you know, you know those guys. You had to turn them loose. Yeah, you yep. know, that's how that's how smart that man was. Now you ended up being his assistant, right? After you 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 got drafted, I believe, by the Celtics, right? Yeah. And then. You had that 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 injury, and then didn't you become an assistant to Coach Haskins? Yes, I was. I was there. As a matter of fact, I was there twice. Uh, once uh, as a graduate assistant. That's what I when I first after after uh, I got hurt, and um, then I was fortunate enough to coach at the University of Wyoming, uh, uh, University of uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and then worked my way back you know, to El Paso and worked with him for two years. And then I got the job at UTSA, mm-hmm. the University of San Antonio, when the program first began. Wow. You know, 
that was a, you know, that was a, that was a, hey, that was an honor, to, you know, to play for the guy. And I was always, you know, somewhat intimidated. I remember one time I was talking to some fans, and he hollered, "Shit!" And I jumped up and almost ran out of the court. And I said, "Wait a minute, hold it. hey man, <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, I'm coaching with this man, you know, <laughs> you know." But that's how he was. That that long, that hard, tenacious voice that he carried all the time. It's, it kind of intimidated me. But as time went on, you know, you know, I called him Big Daddy. You know, yeah. don't call me Daddy. But you know, as time went on, he kind of liked it. Now I have to ask you this, and I know G wants to ask you this, but I I have a better relationship with you, and so I want to ask you this because <laughs> no. you're always going to be my friend, right? Yep. How? authentic like the stories in glory road because i'm sure a lot of people are wondering and i've asked you this before well you know how the movie, the movie i would say is about 85 percent oh you know that's pretty five percent but the essence of the movie that's 100 true of course of so, course but a lot just to be clear you the, never got your head dunked in the toilet right hey, let me tell you something man um <laughs> they called me one time you know find out how the movie's going on and I said, let me ask you something. Why did they take me out of those seven, you know, Afro-American guys and had me to have my head dunked in a toilet? My mother was living, she was about 90 years old, and my nickname is Butch. And she said, Butchie, who stuck your head in the toilet? I said, Mama, I, I, I'll call you. Let me, let me finish this thing here. I said, why would you say that? So they said, well, you know, Neville, we thought that, uh, you know, you were the guy that, you know, knew how to take those type of things and uh, really come back strong. I said, yeah, thank you for that. But ain't nobody sticking my head in no toilet. Plus, <laughs> I was going into a bathroom, bathroom by myself in a place like possibly Little Rock, Little Rock Arkansas. Yeah. You know, it was, you know, he said, well, you know, we might change. I said. Nah, you ain't gonna change it. No. We <laughs> fair now. No, you know, I know, I know uh, they took creative liberty, and, I, and <clears throat> obviously, I asked you that like one of the first times I, well, not one of the first times, but one of the first times we hung out, and I felt comfortable to ask you. Oh and yeah. You told me that, and it, you know, I just wanted everybody else to know that you did not get your head stuck in the toilet. So I'm just I, for public I, record. Uh, stuck in in a in a in a, in a, be, in a toilet, nor. That I sleep outside my dormitory room, but I did say hot doggo. <laughs> part of my Puerto Rican international language, you know, in uh, El Paso. Yeah. And uh, you know, the rooms, yes, they were, you know, they were broken into, but there was not any blood on the walls. But our clothes were torn up and everything. That was quite scary. You oh, know, of course. Got yeah. us out as quick as he possibly could. You know, you know, Neville, we, Matt, Matt and I have a lot, a lot in common with you and your teammates. You know, we, we, uh, you know, obviously we, we played there at the at UTPA and Reynosa's right there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we, we, you know, so, so was that, was that pretty accurate? Did y'all, did y'all have some fun in Mexico? Did y'all cross over? Well, <laughs> um, you know, some. <laughs> Uh, but uh, that was, that's strictly off the records, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's strictly off the record. That's for that's for so, the bareback con the the bareback podcast. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Subscribe. I had to, to follow up because you took my glory road question, Matt. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Cool breeze. Uh, you know, well, you know, libations were quite cheap there, you know. <laughs> but a lot of us, I had a young lady here on this side of the border that occupied my tank my time, so it wasn't necessary for me to go across the border. Did y'all travel by bus or did you did y'all fly everywhere? All the games. Because like that game um when the rooms were broken into, I think that was supposed to be in uh Texas. And the next day we were in Seattle. That must have been a hell of a bus to get there that quick, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, you know, no we um uh, most of our get you know practically all of our games you know, we um we flew, okay. except for um you know Albuquerque, uh, Las Cruces, which was you know down right, right there. there. Yeah. Um, wow, that's uh, 
<laughs> now, what now do you think of the game now? Like you're still, <clears throat> I know yeah. you're still doing the, the motivational speaking and you're the head counselor for the Spurs during the summer and during the, the spring break camps. Over like 30, what do you, what do you think of the games now? Like, what do you think of the game now? Like, what do you see that's, is it good? Is it bad? Like, what's your opinion on the game of basketball now? I think the game is being destroyed. Mm -hmm. So it really is, you know, with, with the greatness of the athletes that participate in the, you know, in the games, but all the antics and, you know, things that they're going through, I, it's, 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 you know, trickling down to our college, to our high school kids, and, you know, just the kids playing basketball. Mm -hmm. We would uh, we would never have dared to jump out there and, uh, you know, go through those kind of antics. We played hard. You know, you had to pay the cost when you went under the basket and everything. But just the way they, all that beautiful talent, you know, that's out there, you know, night after night. And, you know, is you know, the kids have to make a very, very positive choice of who are they going to want to be like. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, be like you know some of those guys, but some of your great athletes, you know, it's 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 very uncomfortable to watch. Okay. And yeah. Question: Sometimes when I was playing, that never would have happened, and uh, the ability that we had was just as good. And it could be one time, one thing too, because of what they're being paid. Mm. Oh, oh, but absolutely. The game is getting, you know. It's, it, we know, we know we're going to look at it and enjoy it, but to me, it's getting it's dangerous. Yeah. You know, kids are going through penalties. You know, the penalties and uh, you know, unsportsmanlike conduct to the highest degree. Sometimes, you know, that's that's not good for the game of basketball. You can look at it. I laugh sometimes with the, uh, you know, they talk about you know the starting the starting five or a lot of the teams. You know. One part of Glory Road where he said, can you imagine uh, seeing uh, five colored boys out there, you know, playing? We wouldn't have any jobs. Now you look at some of the teams, when you look at Georgia and Texas and Kentucky, you know, they start, you know, you can see them out there with 10, 10 athletes, of, you know, Afro-Americans, you know, playing the game. And people yeah. don't look at it, how that would have been looked at over 50 years ago, which is a which is a, you know, it makes you feel good, but yet under the circumstances that we had to go through, it was hard work. And to have our cat to a certain extent now have to go through that, you know, it's not good for our younger athletes. You know, it's just not good. And, and I think it's dangerous if we do not really put a stop to it. And if it is brought out, they need to penalize them. Mm -hmm. No, not with old oh, going to counselor and, and a couple of games out. Man, stick it to them, man. You know, let them realize that this is not going to be tolerated with a game as beautiful and, you know, you know, very, very popular to watch. I got like one or two more questions. I know G's got a ton of questions, but the one man. question I want, the one question, because I get to talk to you all the time. G never gets to talk to you, right? So this is G's, this but that's is G's a, moment. That's okay. That's okay, Neville. Matt, uh, cool breeze is just stealing all the questions, and I and I'm okay with it, 100. percent 100. I got I got one question. So you were drafted by the Celtics, and you went into camp, and Bill Russell, who's since passed away, was there at camp, right? He was on the Celtics at that time, correct? Sure. How tough was he? Because he is an icon, like. How tough was he to guard him in practice on a daily? Hey, phenomenal. Hey, this guy, you know, he was <laughs> – Bill Russell was, you know, 6'9 and 6'10. You know, he, you know, to hold him. And, he, you know, to hold him, he didn't say much. You know, his actions spoke for him. You know, a great rebounder. He can run, you know, and he was Mr. Basketball, and it showed that, you know, they carry his number on the jerseys mm -hmm. to this, you know. But that team had other great bands. They had, you know, Bill Russell, Havlicek, Sam yep. Jones, Sat Sanders, Bailey Howell. 
Wayne Embry. You know, they had a great team that year. That was Coach uh, Coach Russell's uh, first year of coaching. Wow. So they had a heck of a team, you know. But he and you was were hard. part of it. And again, you're part of history, Neville. Oh, man. Just, hey, when I got hurt, all I could do was sit on the bench or sit in the crowd there. But, you know, people say, man, you didn't play much? I said, no, but I made it. I, you know, I was the Celtics. You know, I got drafted by the best team in the NBA at that time. But I, I, I can always say that well, God had other plans for me. And mm. it wasn't bad after, you know, those guys. And I knew a lot of them. I played with a whole lot of them because they'd come to New York to play in the Rucker. Yeah. At that time was a mecca of basketball in the summer. Still is. Yeah, still is. Wow. So so Matt Matt mentioned a bunch, I mean, you know, that that time and, and Neville, you mentioned a bunch of great players. But uh, I I got a chance to uh, to work basketball camp with George Gervin. Uh, you know, what's your how's your relationship with uh, with Man, George? Hey, we are very 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 close. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Let me tell you something. I wish I could show you pictures of him when I came here to San Antonio in '81. You know, he was slim, you know, Phil, and I also was pretty slim, also playing. And yeah. we I used to go places, and even today. We'd go downtown or even go to the ring. They say, "Hey, hey, can I take your picture? Can I take your picture?" And I said, "Who do you think I am?" Oh, Ice, we know who you are. I said, "No, I'm not Ice Man." They turn around, <laughs> you know. Then they find out who I actually am, and I'll throw a little history on my say, "Google my name." <laughs> so hey, I go through all that stuff, and then they'll find out that history that comes out. But Ice Man, I, like, if you see me today, he said. Hey, what's up there? I never said Hall of Fame. Oh, I said, no, 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 you the man. No, no, we're Hall of Famers. I'm <laughs> number- you know, Yo- Neville, I've been I've been blessed to personally witness the interactions several times <laughs> between you and Ice. I actually have a picture with you and Ice. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, he is not lying. Their interactions are this way. <laughs> like they they have mutual respect and they just you know, they, they, they are, there's a fondness to, to, to one another. So yeah, how did that, that relationship, I oh, no. Did, did y'all play against each other or? Yeah. Excuse me? Did you all play against each other or how did, how did, how did y'all become so close? And, you know, they would scrimmage at UTSA, you know, yeah. every now and then, um, you know, he'd come to shoot, you know, cause the whole team was there, but I kind of stayed away from him playing against him. I didn't want to get embarrassed. You know, <laughs> this guy was a phenomenal shooter, you know, and as you know, he's famous for the finger roll, you know, oh, yeah. hey. and uh, oh, yeah. he broke every dog on record in the NBA. He did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and he's no- one of the nicest men you'll ever meet, too. Like, shout well, out to Ice. Shout out to Little G. Like, hey, you know, shout, his out, son. shout out to Ice, man. But you're saying one of the nicest men. I mean, Neville, Neville is one of the nicest men I've ever met. I mean, Neville's I'm just a legend. To be a part of this this podcast, you know? Thank you for asking me on, Matt. Man, Neville, this is awesome. Neville is a legend. He is an absolute oh, jewel. Legend. That's all. And, you know, in, in my lifetime, you know, having that dream to becoming a, a basketball player, you know, I was always taught without a dream or a passion for something one cannot receive his or her, you know, uh, you know, purpose. And mm-hmm. for me, you know, I was a little fat kid at one time playing in the, in, the, in the parks because they didn't have, you know, the gyms like they have today. And I was out there playing by myself one time, you know, and this guy walked past, all right, and saw me out there, you know, he said, boy, what you doing? I said, I'm trying to, you know, learn the game of basketball, and the guys wouldn't let me play with them. And uh, he said, how's your grade? I said, you know, the same thing they said today. I, I, I don't know how to spell I. <laughs> he started teaching me the game of basketball. When I made, when I got to high school, I started all four years in there, you know, and of course got the scholarship. And one time he told me, he said, uh, he said, uh, Butch, which is my nickname, he said, make me proud. Make me proud of you. You go out there and play that game. Later on, I found out who that guy was. His name was John Isaac. 
He was on the first Negro professional basketball team, also on the Hall of Famer, on the Harlem Renaissance. Wow. You know, this guy was just walking, and, and you know, you know, I was able to, you know, when I received uh, that award, to say, you know, I said to myself, you know, John, I hope I did make you proud. You know, those are the kind of guys I grew up with, you know, yeah. and from them laughing at me to the part that, hey, here come Butch, man, here come Shad, man, you know, and, you know, being able to hold my ground. And I remember I went home many a time with bloody shirts and everything. And I, my mother would say, baby, I just bought that Fruit of the Loom shirt for you. He said, mama, that's how you got to play. You know, you know, that's how you got to get in there and get tough. Said, but, you know, you got to you gotta do better than that. But when I really began to master the game, yeah. so it came a lot well, easier. I gained more respect. One of my, one of, and we've got about five more minutes left, but one of my favorite stories, Neville, if I, if I can share it and you can correct me, but you used to tell us the story that you couldn't afford to go to the camps at the Y. And oh, so, yeah. and it, and there was a, there was like windows at the top. Like it was, the gym was like sunken down. So the windows uh -huh. were like street level. So you could look down into the gym. And so you know, we're, we're kind of short on time, but please tell them the story so we can have this on record because this absolute, this absolutely is a testament to your work ethic and your drive. And, well, and I, 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 I so love this story. You know, what he's trying to say is that, you know, the YMCA, you know, I couldn't afford to go to it. And like you said, this, the gym was down the basement and there were windows that, uh, you know, we could look down and, you know, the air conditioning things were not, the windows would get foggy, you mm -hmm. know? And I, I paid this kid 25 cents to keep wiping, the, you know, the sweat off of the window. And I was outside, you know, working on my drills, the ball handling stuff there, watching them sweating and, uh, you know, in the, in the 90, 100 degrees uh, weather, you know, just to have a chance to play. Until somebody, you know, saw me one time out there and gave me that opportunity. Man, I wanted to play. Yep. That was my dream. But Lord knows, I never thought in my life to receive the things, you know. Uh, high school All-American, you know, got a, a four-year scholarship, won a national championship, being drafted by the Boston Celtics, or having a movie, Glory Road, having my picture, you know, right here on a, on a box of Wheaties. You know, hey, come on now. You know, they're talking about Wheaties. That's the breakfast of champions, you know? And then later on to become a Hall of Famer. Hey, yep. and this is something that anybody can do if they really believe in themselves, you know? And, you know, it's not just the game. It's your character, working hard, representing you know, yourself at the highest level. Those are, those are the products that make a Hall, I mean, Hall of Famer or what they say, a legend. Yep. You know, so I'm just here with Willie Cager, who's no longer... You know, with us, man, we, we know. We, My condolences, we, Neville. My condolences. You know, you know, it was hard. We earned that. It wasn't a silver spoon to like a lot of our kids do. We were fundamentally sound. Mm -hmm. And we believed that we could win. Fear no one. And that's what our kids, but there's a whole lot that comes to that. I wish one time I have another chance to uh, be on the podcast so I can brag about all the stuff I have in the back there. You know, I look at it wow. all the time. I walk through the door and I just say, you know, thank you, God, you know, you know I'm, what you've given me and it's given back time. That's I'm all. Sure, I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. I won't have you back, but I know G would love to have you back. So you, know, you can all come right. back anytime, Neville. <laughs> hey, I love it, man. You know, I'll convince, I'll convince, man. I'll have a conversation with him. Now. Neville, I, you can come back any day of the week you want, my friend. Oh, gobble, man. gobble. Like, to be continued. You know, oh, I told G, I told G, you never tell anybody goodbye. You always tell them what, Neville? To be continued. That's <laughs> what, that's if how it, I part. To be continued. If it's Neville okay, shed, I'm going to adopt that if that's okay with you. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Neville Shedd, thank you so much for, for joining the show. You were a true friend, a mentor, and more importantly, you're a blessing. And, and you're godsend. And, and thank you so much for being a, a good part, a big part of my life and my son's life and, and, and being who you are for the game of basketball. And I, ble I, I wish you all the blessings in the world, my friend. And you talk. That's right. 
say, hey, you guys are the legends because you know you you guys are singing a song and hoping that individuals all over who listen and watch you know your podcast they catch on to the melody, man. And you know y'all y'all keep on doing what you're doing, you know, and just hope that they'll grasp on to the powerful things that you all stand for. You know, wow. that's good. That's definitely a to be continued. Love you guys. <laughs> Thank you for your passion. Devil, you can come back anytime you want, my friend. You are gonna yeah. be a you're gonna be a true staple on the show. We'll talk basketball. We'll talk anything. We'll 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 hang no, out. No, no, keep it clean. Keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm fired. That's what I that I just heard. I think I'm fired. I think I think he just hired his new co-host. Now. <laughs> oh man. Oh, it's it's fun. <laughs>